through no sorry two through 12 because every time i do it i get one in 13 as like remainders in it mm -hmm. and i'm not okay. entirely sure how to get rid of it okay so uh if you followed my suggestion of uh making the histogram list variable 13 long instead of 11 long which is what you technically all you need if you made it as 13 then uh, you want to simply, when you're printing it out, just start at index number two. Okay. So for example, you could say uh, for um, I in range uh, two to um, the length of histogram, Okay. Siri here. Let me know if I can help. You really can't help, so shut the bleep up. Go away, Siri. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now, but this is going to give you numbers starting at two. So when you go to print, you just want to print. Uh, I'm not doing the proper syntax here. Yeah, uh, to, to, you know, you're supposed to have the, the, you know, the, the, the bracket and the number and, and some formatting. But so dispensing with that, you just want to print I minus two. Uh, so, excuse me. Uh, no, that's not right. That's not right. I was thinking, totally off, off the wall. That's wrong. So yes, there you go. Uh, you can print I and it'll start at two and it'll go up to 12. Okay, did that answer your question, Santana? Yeah, for the most part, yeah. Okay. Other questions? Review or book or project? Uh, yeah, I actually had a question on the project. So I, I have the project, like I have the two through 12 and whatnot, but whenever I try to do the um, the print commands that you gave us at the very end of the project of that GitHub page, it never, it doesn't work right. It doesn't like, it, it like it'll delete it and not like it'll delete it all and it won't actually like say anything. Like it won't, won't put the, the output of the, of the program. Uh, okay, uh, I'm gonna make it possible for you to uh, share your code. Okay. Even though that means that you're sharing your code. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. so let me think about that. So I mean, I can you... send it to you in a in an email. Okay, that's, that's fine too. So uh, if I understood you correctly, you're not getting any output. Well, I'm getting an output, but when I add the the like the print strings at the very end, where it like clears it and then it puts it at row or at the first row, it doesn't it doesn't print any of it. Right. Like, like it just clears it and it doesn't actually give me the actual output. And I tried yeah. rewriting it so the clear goes first and then I put the, 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 the other thing second, but it still doesn't work quite right. Yeah, the, the, clear, the clear printing should go first. Yeah, I, I've done and that. And you won't see any output. So yeah. if you're not seeing those, the, the one semicolon one H, that sort of stuff, you shouldn't see that at all. Mm -hmm. Those are internal codes to the terminal. Okay. So yeah. what you do see is the action caused by those codes. It should go to the top of the screen and, and uh, erase the screen. Mm -hmm. So, maybe so, you're, so you're is, correct. is that not like a copy paste thing then? Is that something that I have to know myself? The copy paste thing. Yeah. Because like what I did was I just copy and pasted it directly from the GitHub on the program, but then I rearranged the second line to go before everything else, like the clear line, but it still doesn't work quite right. Okay, so the first and second need to be before the rest of your printing. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Maybe maybe that's what I did wrong then. Here, let me yeah. try that. One. If it doesn't work, then I'll, I'll email you. Michael. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So there's the print 
and a print of uh, two sets of escape codes. Okay, and when that happens, that's gonna move the cursor from wherever it was back up to here. And then you've got the rest of your prints and that goes, that prints out the values. So the first thing is to move the cursor, erase the screen, then start printing. So that the actual characters of the escape sequence get eaten by the terminal. Yep, I, I did it. I must have put it after the, the second or the, the print input. So it looks good now. Good, good, I'm glad. Mm -hmm. Other questions? All right. What about questions from the book? You have a reading due today. Anybody? Anybody? Uh, I did have a question on the book too. I don't know if it was me, but I just could not figure out like the binary numbers. Like I was looking at that and I could not figure it out at all. Okay. Can you give me a chapter and verse? Uh, yeah, here, let me open the book. I don't I think it was like three, it was three point, it was like somewhere in the middle. Let me look real quick. I'll get back to you when I find it. Okay. All right. So I will uh, log into the book. And also log into REPL. Okay, so maybe I could do a search binary. Uh, would it be 3.9? Uh, something in 3.9? Yeah, 3.9. Okay, so the participation activity, what? Like 3.92, like convert the binary number 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1 to a decimal number. Like something okay, like very good. Uh, I can take over from here. Uh, let me first write down a few things. Um, let's see. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. That's the first one. And the second one is 1, 0, 0, 0. And one zero zero zero. That's the second one. And now let's convert uh, seventeen into binary and uh, fifty one into binary. Okay. Now I can uh, look at uh, my iPad. Now we wait. Okay. All right. So. Uh, the first one asks you to convert binary to decimal. And the way that you do that is, let me rewrite this here in, in large letters. Okay, so in a different color, uh, this is the ones place. This is twos, fours, eights, 16, 32, 64, 128. Okay, good so far? Uh, Nicholas? Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Okay, so uh, converting this to decimal would be eight plus four plus two plus one equals 15. Oh, okay. Okay. 
Uh, now, let me uh, write in one more, get rid of that. I'm going to write in, in the alternate mode. So this is 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 squared, 2 cubed. OK, so two maybe that's what I was missing, the 2 at the bottom. That, I think that's what I was missing. Oh, they're all okay. powers of 2. I didn't realize that. Yeah, all powers of 2. OK. Right. Now, if you look at a decimal number, um, a decimal number, you know, the, the one's place, the tens place, but now we're in binary. So it's the one's place and the two's place. So the one's place is always in decimals 10 to the zero. Then 10 to the one is 10, 10 to the 10 squared is hundred. Mm -hmm. So it all works the same. It's just a different base. So let's take a look at the next example. We are recording, so. All right, let's write in the next example. Uh, and that would be uh, one, zero, 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 and one, zero, zero, zero. So this is 128 plus eight, equal 136. Yeah, that makes more sense, thank you. I was so confused, I'm like, what do these zeros and ones mean? Right, right. Now let's go the other direction. Let's go the other direction and do 17 into binary. So uh, look at these numbers at the top and what's the biggest one that goes into 17? 16. Good. So we'll put a one there. Now what's the remainder? 17 minus 16 is one. So zero here, zero here, zero here, and a one there. Okay? Yeah. And then the rest of these are zeros. So that's 17. And you can see that 16 plus one is 17. All right, let's try the last one. So looking at these top numbers, what's the biggest one that goes into 51? 32. Okay, now what's 51 minus 32? Uh, it is, what is that, 17? No, 19. Yeah, 19. Okay, so of what's left, the biggest um, one is a 16. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 19 minus 16 is 3, mm -hmm. which would mean that and that. Okay, that makes more sense. Thank you. Okay, good. Other questions from the book? I have one just tiny about the project. What the heck was enumerate? I'm still like lost on that and I couldn't figure out how to use it in the project itself. Uh, okay, so enumerate. And some kind of container. Like a list. Okay, so enumerate returns two things. Okay, so the way that you would use it is uh, one variable, comma, another variable equals, um, no, no, that's not true, in. No, enumerate and let's say a list. And the two values are, this is the value at position, and this one is the position. All right, so if you drink this in for a moment, then I'll switch to uh, uh, 
Ripple. Yep. Okay, so here's Replit. And uh, let me switch to showing that. And here. And how about um, in class? Okay, so suppose we have a list. Uh, a list equals um, uh, one, three, five, seven, nine. And now we want to do an enumerate. So for the position comma value in enumerate L, looking good so far, print position value. All right, let's try that. <clears throat> okay, so the, the first number printed corresponds to the position within the list. And then the second number printed is the value at that precision, a uh, position. Okay, does that help? Yeah, I think it does. Okay, so while we're here, I want to show something new. Uh, now you've seen print with, uh, let's say, position and value and then end equals and something. You've seen that, right? Everybody remember that? Here, let me put that in. So uh, end equals end. So let's see what that does. So at the end of every string, you have END. So this is known as a named argument because you give it its, you, you specify its name and its value. I'd like to show you a, another one that print supports, and that would be SEP equals, and watch what you get here. So now we got zero comma. So in general, it would be okay. So you're specifying the separator between values. Okay, more questions. Problems from the book? Problems from the uh, project? Go ahead. I'm still having a bit of trouble with the changing the values of the index to 2 and 12, because when I'm checking it, Every time I look at the outputs for two, it's at 0%. Oh, okay. So here, let's let's try something. Uh, back to REPL. And let's say the list is equal to uh, 13 copies of zero, right? And uh, let's say L2 equals uh, 30 and L12 equals 30. So and now let's print out, let's see what we've got. Print L, the whole thing. Okay. So if I wanted to print both the values and uh, the positions in the range of 2 to 12. So 
for position in range two to 13, but let the computer do your calculating for you. So the length of L, okay, uh, print position and L at the position. Okay. So does this help, Santana? I uh, yeah, I think it's helping for sure. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Well, let me take a look at the things that I want to cover. And why is this so slow? Unbelievable. Okay, so uh, I wanted to talk about this and we have, we've done review, book questions, and project questions. So I'd like to skip to the next project. Okay. So you'll find that, uh, yeah, go to LMS. We are projecting the wrong thing, but I caught it. I get credit for finding it. We're discovering that all by myself. Resend the code. There it is. And yeah, remember me. All right. So projects. Project three, and here's a link. So uh, we're about to learn how to read files, and we're about to learn how to use DICTS, D-I-C-T, dictionaries. And this project will be due on the 15th. So notice that's a little extra time than I usually give. So, what are you gonna do about it with that extra time? Oh, I know. Why don't you procrastinate longer and still leave the project to the day before? Sound, sound like a good idea? I'm looking at your faces. Okay, sounds good to me. Okay, now, so you got extra time, make sure you use the extra time. Start early, work steadily. Okay, so let's go to the project. Uh, the idea is that I'm giving you, and I'll demonstrate how to get it, all the words one at a time in Frankenstein. So your goal is to read all of the words, perhaps with a little bit of uh, uh, massaging, and put them in each of the words into a dictionary and use the dictionary to count how many times that word appears. Okay, so let's take a look at the sample output. So here's, I ran Python with my program and Behind the scenes, it reads all the individual words in Frankenstein and puts together this data structure called a dictionary. So then I can type in the. The was used 4,371 times in Frankenstein. Brown does not appear in the book. Dog appears twice. Jumped appears once over 58 times. And if you enter quit, the program exits. 
Anybody have any questions about what the program is supposed to do? Okay, so let me demonstrate, and we are recording, good. Let me demonstrate how to get the data file. Let me skip to Replit and delete this. We don't need that right now. Okay, so starting from the spec, click here, click on that link, and it will download all the words in Frankenstein to your computer. Then go to Replit using the vertical three dots, upload and find the, um, okay, I have no idea. Oh yeah, I'm on a different computer now. So let's look for, there's a lot of things here. So, uh, Shelly spelled wrong. And there it is. Okay. And it's the whole book, just one word on a line. All right, so any questions about how to get the data file? Download it to your computer, upload it to Replit. Okay. So there's, that's how you get the words. Uh, the program, this is the outline of the program. You can think of the program as running in two steps. One is to Gather, open the file, gather all the words, build the dictionary, then that step is done. You close the file. And then a second phase, process the user input. So you prompt the user uh, to enter a word. You get the word. If it's quit, you exit the program. If it's not quit, you look to see how many times that word shows up in the dictionary. I keep using this word, dictionary, dictionary, dictionary. Uh, let's start looking at what a dictionary is. Okay. So a dictionary is a little different than a list. Because in order to find something in a list, you have to know its position. So let me go here. Okay, so suppose you have a list. L equals L equals the um, A true uh, B capital letters. Okay, so the only way to go through this data structure is to use indices. So uh, this one is uh, L zero. This one is L one, this one is L2. So if you wanted, for example, to find the B, you didn't know where B is, the, the letter B there. You didn't know where it was. You'd have to start at the beginning and then compare, it, 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 uh, loop through every member of the list until you find the one you're looking for or you reach the end of the list to discover that what you were looking for isn't present. Okay, so Python gives us two more data structures, both indicated by braces, and they are set and dictionary. So let's look at set first. So set, uh, has uh, the presence of a key or its absence. So something is either in the set or it's not in the set. 
Now, a dictionary is does that, but it also does more. So it has presence of a particular member, a uh, particular key, and I'll explain that in a second, uh, and a value. So it is a mapping of keys to values, whereas a set only has keys. All right, uh, let me demonstrate. Okay, so how about we have a set equals, uh, and it's a brace, and it'll be uh, Mary, John, and uh, Goofy. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll do it in the console. So uh, we can just do it live. Okay, so what, what's in the set? John, Goofy, and Mary. Okay, actually, this is kind of interesting. You have no idea what order it's in. So sets, you have no idea of the order. All right, so uh, how about uh, S is John in the S? Yes. How about um, Joe in S? False. Okay. Now let's take a look at a dictionary. And Mary, I'll do it in the same order. Colon, uh, favorite ice cream, comma, John, uh, colon, and uh, strawberry, and finally, Goofy. Well, Goofy can only have one favorite. That's got to be Tutti Fruity. And you got to spell it right. Otherwise, Goofy won't know what he's getting. Uh, two... Tutti Fruity. Okay. So what's in the dictionary? This time you notice that the order in the dictionary is the order in which the items were added. That's kind of interesting. So is um, Mary in D? True. What's the value mapped to Mary? Uh, and that would be D. What's the key? Mary. Vanilla. Okay. Now, how about this? Um, how would you add a new value to the map? Uh, let's say uh, we didn't find Joe before. And now Joe is in the Oh, look at that. I spelled strawberry wrong the same way twice. Go figure. Okay. So sets can store only whether or not a particular key is in the set. But a dictionary stores keys. And for every key, there is a value. OK? Uh, now just to prove a point, let's add one more to the dictionary. Um, uh, Marcia uh, might like more than one flavor of ice cream. So there's nothing, so why not put in a list? So how about 
vanilla and chocolate. So what is what is uh, Marsha like? Marsha. So the the point I'm trying to make is that when I say a value, it could be anything else that Python can store. So it's not just a string like vanilla. It's conceivable you could have a dictionary inside of a dictionary inside of a dictionary. So in this program, this project, you need to uh, determine, you need to count how many times each word uh, appears. So let's say the word was fish. So if I, I read in the word fish, which we haven't looked at how to read from files. So I read in the word fish and I want to add one to the count of the number of times I've seen fish. So D fish, that's my dictionary, uh, plus equals one and it doesn't work. Oh. So it doesn't work because adding one to a member of the dictionary means the dictionary is uh, that that member has to be read first and fish uh, isn't in there. So you would do something like this if The, the, the word, I should have said W for the word, if W not in the D, then D W equals zero, then you could do D W plus equals one. Okay. So from here down, I've demonstrated that before you can increment the number of times you've seen a word, the word has to be in the dictionary already. Okay. Okay, so any questions about uh, dictionary. What do you do with dictionaries in real life? You look things up, right? Well, here's a lookup. That's the way you can think of this. This is a lookup. Uh, you're looking up the value of fish and it's value of one. So dictionaries are lookups. So I hope that some of you are already thinking is like, oh, maybe I can use dictionaries to form kind of a database inside my program. And I can look stuff up in the database and I can do it really, really quickly. Right. Now I mentioned quickly, let me type over here. All right. To find one value in a list of n elements, worst case takes n comparisons. You're saying, is it this one? Is it this one? Is it this one? Is it this one? So that's with a list. But with the dictionary, to find one key in a dictionary of any number takes the same amount of time. Any number, any mem, oh yeah, yeah, any number of elements. OK, 
Okay, so there's a big, big difference between list and dictionary. If you need to do lookups, you don't want to use a list unless you're talking about a really, really small set of data. Okay. All right. Okay. Anybody have any questions about dictionaries? Okay. So let's take a look at using files. Now I've got a, um, a file here called Shelly.txt, which uh, really is spelled wrong. It, it's supposed to be E L L E Y, but um, uh, nobody's perfect. So I can say uh, working with files is you have to open them. You have to close them when you're done using them and you can read from them and you can write to them. Uh, you can even move around in them. So today we're gonna learn uh, how to open a file how to close a file, and different ways of reading from a file. And we'll learn more about files as in the future. Okay. So here's an example. Um, input file. The name of this variable, it's just the variable. You can name it anything you want that makes sense. And open and give it the name of the file. And then next thing we'll do is close it. Okay, so this program doesn't do much. It opens the file and closes it immediately. Let's see if it works. And it didn't crash, so it worked. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first one is, the first way to read is to uh, say input file.read, and that reads entire file uh, into a variable. Okay, so let's try that. So um, words equals input file dot read. All right, and then let's print out words. Now you're gonna have to kill this because there are so many words. All the best words. Okay, Python uh, in class and um, uh, did I save this uh, somehow? Okay. So, uh, oh, that was the whole book. That wasn't so bad. All right, so dot read reads the whole file and puts everything it finds into words, uh, into a variable. Now let's look at something else. It's a different way. Let's do this. Input file dot read line reads next line into a variable. And that's going to go into a word. Okay. So just one word. And there's an icky extra line there. We'll talk about that in a minute. Another way of reading is input file.readlines reads all 
lines into a list. That's pretty cool. So I'll make that words again. And I'll make it read lines instead of just read line. Okay, so that's uh, now all of the words, all of the lines in the book, which happen to be one word per line, all of the lines in the book are now in a list called words. Okay. How many words, how many lines are there? Uh, we could... Uh, Okay, run that again. There's 78,530 lines in the file. But notice here, every one of these ends in backslash n, new line. And that's why you were getting an extra line out a moment ago. So let me do this, the read line. And let's look at that extra line. So Word gets input file read line. And I want to print the word, not it's not the number of letters in it. Okay. Okay, see that extra line there? That's this character. At the end of every line is the new line character. So you want to strip those, and you could use your friend the slice to strip. So let's slice. So word equals word. And I want you to start at the beginning. And so an empty, empty value before the colon means start at the beginning and then stop when you get to the length of the word. Let's see what that does. Nope, didn't get there quite enough. Didn't, didn't just cut off anything. Word minus one, the length of the word minus one. Good, that works. But this is kind of verbose. Do you remember what a slice with negative one would do? Let's try that. See, there you go. Another requirement is that you make them, so you have to strip all the new lines and you got to make them all lowercase. Okay, so let's factor that in the lower case and say uh, dot lower. So there it's sliced and then took the lower case. Okay, any questions? Okay. Now I'd like to show you um, a way to read the file one line at a time in a loop. And that would be for uh, a word in the input file. And I really should call these lines because they are lines uh, for every line in the input file. Print the line. Let's try that. Oh, I took out that stripping stuff. And this will stop when there are no more no more lines in the file.
Okay. So does anybody have any questions? Okay, so here's what I'd like you to do. Uh, using either uh, this construction or this one, or this one, not line eight, don't use that model. So write a program to read first 10 lines and print them uh, along with the line number. Can you write that program for me? Remember, you have to open and close the file. So you can base your code off of uh, line 9, 10, or 11, 12. I have three dogs staring at me. Why don't you go haunt a house? Go ahead, go away. They're just staring at me. Which by definition, they're making puppy eyes at me. Okay, how are you doing on that program? Let me ask you a question. How are you gonna figure out line numbers? Okay, so uh, how, let's do it using line, the construction on line nine first. So you, you, you don't have line numbers. You have to create a line number, line counter. So line counter equals uh, one. And then, no, we'll do it this way. For line counter in range of one to 10, so I want uh, 11. And uh, a line is input file.read line. That's the line nine that I'm trying to model with. And then a print. So print uh, line, line counter, and then text line. Let's see if that works. Okay, that's pretty good. Except now let's do that slice thing and the lower. So we can slice and do make it lowercase. Oh, good, that's better. Okay, any questions about this code? So the way to read this is read a line from input file removing the first, uh, excuse me, removing the last character and make the whole input into lowercase.
All right. Now let's try it using line 10. Line 10, that's going to look a little different. So uh, lines equals uh, input file dot read lines. And this time, Uh, let's see, we want the first 10 lines. And this would be line counter, but it's starting at zero. I want to start numbering at one. And then it would be lines. Uh, line plural, uh, line counter. And one more thing, we can put the slice and the split here uh, in the lowercase here. Let's try that. Okay, same result. Uh, nope, not the same result. I had already led, read 10 lines, so let's get rid of this. Okay. So here, line 21 read the entire file in a blink of an eye and put each line into a list, another member of a list. And then I'm just printing out the first 10 members of the list. Any questions about this construction? And then finally, the construction from line 10, no, from lines 11 and 12, these two. Let me comment this out. Okay. Um, so here. And this would be, now I have to create my own counter. Line counter equals one. And I want this one. I'm starting at one, so I don't need, uh, and then it would be line. Whoops. Okay. Let me get this a little bit wider. Okay, so this is three ways of reading from the file, except I made a mistake, didn't I? So control C. What's the mistake I made? I only wanted to print 10, so. So put a range on? Uh, I'm not using a range. Um, I'm reading the lines one at a time, which I suppose I could have put into a range, but that's you know an infinite number of ways of doing it. But here, line counter plus equals one. Now, how do I limit it to 10? If line counter is greater than or equal to 10, what will break out of a loop? What statement will break out of a loop? It's a white horse question. Break. Yep. All right, let's try that. 
And I suppose it should have been less than or equal to 10. Nope. Um, this should have been 11. There. Okay. So there's three different ways of reading from a file. Okay. Anybody have any questions about reading from a file? Okay, so I'm going to leave this here and erase the rest. And so some of this you're going to have to repeat, and it's up to you. And I'm going to delete that also. Yeah, I'll leave that one in. <laughs> okay, and I'll leave in the input file dot close. I'll leave that in also. Now, new program to write. Read the entire file. Then pick a word or a line at random and print and then um, okay, can you write that program? It picks a line at random which we happen to know is a single word per uh, line. So it chooses a, a, a line at random from the entire file and prints it out. One word at random. Okay, can anybody tell me how to do it? Okay, so should I import anything? What should I import? You need to import a random, right? From random. Okay, so from random, Import. You could do randint. That's true, but uh, I kind of put a, a, a white horse question, uh, a white horse word in there. So let's do choice. Okay. So we want to read the entire file into something where we could pick out one line at a time. Now, read will read the entire file, but it puts all of everything into one variable with no way of breaking out the individual words. Now, read line, well, I wanna read the entire file. So I think the right choice is read lines. Let's go for that. So, um, Line equals input file that read lines. And now print. What should we print? And let's see. A choice word from Frankenstein, and that would be choice. 
from lines. So notice I, I pluralized that if, in case you're copying this down. Lines. And where should I do the slicing and uh, lowercase? After the choice. So here you slice. And then smash it to lower case. And you got to pluralize like I said to do pluralize. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about this? Does it all make sense? What were the brackets for the colon minus one for again? That's the slice. So uh, I'm going to uh, get rid of all this. That uh, well. Everybody's copied down what they needed to copy down. And I'm going to get rid of it all. And uh, so here's a word. Uh, well, here's a string. And so I'm going to print that string. And notice there's two lines printed at the bottom. You see that the blank line? So my goal, goal is to remove the last character. So I can do that with slicing. I can say S equals S, and here comes the slice. So from the beginning, uh, when we went over slicing, we talked about that there's a colon, and then the left side of the colon, the right side of the colon is from and to. So if this is empty on the left side of the colon, that means starting at zero. And then you're going to end uh, before you get to the last character. OK, does that help, Santana? Yeah, that makes sense. Good. Uh, I think I can get my, if I undo enough, I sh should, uh, if I'm lucky, I'll get back all that other stuff. Okay. Now let me look at my list of things to do. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, now there's a, a little bit more new knowledge that I want to impart to you. Uh, and that has to do with functions again. So uh, we, we can write a function starting with the word def. And we're giving it a parameter and we're going to print p. So now I'm going to call it. Now, anybody have any predictions? Is this going to work or not? No. Okay. No, it won't work. Because notice what it says here, a required positional argument is missing and it was named, it should be named P. So if I put in, uh, put in an R, a value for the argument, no problem. Take it away and it's an error because this is a positional argument. But I can give a positional argument a default value right there. So the default value of P is 99. 
Let's run the program and check that out. Where did the value, there's the, 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 the P is missing. The value for P is missing. But if you look at the definition of the function, you've given it a default value to use when the argument is missing. So here comes Q. Uh, let's see if this works. Hmm. That's interesting. A non-default argument follows a default argument. Why do you think this is giving it canaries? So if you give default values, they have to be at the end of your argument list. So if I change the order of these, put the Q first, the Q is the one that's a required positional and it's missing. So let me give it a default value. Okay, now let's also print it out, Q and P. Okay, so now, how do you, now that we have two of them, how do we override the default value for which one? So now we get to use named parameters. And I'm gonna say Q equals uh, eight. Let's see what that does. Didn't do anything. I don't know. All right. I'm confused. Okay. I don't know why it was giving me the 66, but here I've named, given the values to directly to the names of the parameters. And you'll note that I should be able to do it in any order now that I'm being explicit about what value goes where. See, even though it's now nine comma eight, it's still printed as eight comma nine. And I want to see that. See, of course, now it's working. Yeah. So uh, here, up here, that wasn't me. That was uh, Replit executing the old code. So foo with Q equals nine, it printed the Q is nine, and it took the default value for P. So those are named parameters. Now you've actually used the named parameter before. Here it is. And oh, you've used another one now. Okay. So N and SEP are both named parameters for print. Now, does it mean you could you could name anything you want? That's not right. That's spelled wrong. It's X Y Z Z Y. Okay. No, you can't just name it anything you want. You can only use named parameters that were programmed in by the programmer of the function. Okay. So today, what have we done today? We've done a first pass at dictionaries. 
and uh, they are in chapter three, I believe, uh, which is the reading that's due tonight. Uh, let me see, that would be in uh, Zybooks, yeah. And so here's dictionaries, 3.4. And we have also taken a first pass at reading files. And we also looked at default values for parameters and using named parameters. Uh, in particular, we used uh, SEP. That was new. Okay, what else did we do? Well, I'm sure we did some other things. Oh yeah, we did binary. Okay, so does anybody have any questions about these things? Okay. Oh, also we saw how to upload a data file, which we'll do more and more. So it's really critical after this part where we learn dictionaries, uh, sets, we didn't really talk about sets, it's in the reading. Uh, after we've done dictionaries and we're able to read files, then the amount of different tools we can write skyrockets. So it's after this point, things start getting int really interesting. Okay. So are, are there any of these that are on screen right now that you'd like to see again? Well, all right then, if nobody has questions, that's all the material for today. Is that all right? Babe, I'll see you on Thursday. Uh, email me so questions if you have them. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Have a good one. Okay. Have a good day. Too.